Of course, once you have this, you can count the words for tidy uh, for AG wells also. You can say tidy AG wells count words sod equals true. Okay. Of course, we've already got rid of the stop words. So you're going to get the top words used by uh, by AG wells. Right. And you can compare that with the uh, top words used by Jane Austen. So that itself is going to give you some idea of uh, what are the common words that these two different authors use. Of course, uh, the two authors are writing about fairly distinct different things. Uh, right? Jane Austen is the typical Victorian uh, stories and H.G. Wells is writing about other kinds of things and H.G. Wells also wrote at a much later period in time. So you'll be able to compare some of these things uh, and get some insights. Let's go and get some more books from Gutenberg package. So we're going to get all the books by uh, some of the books by the Bronte sisters. So I, uh, we have found out that some of the book IDs by the Bronte sisters are these. So we can do Gutenberg download and of course if this fails you can go back to the previous slide and and get the you know include the mirror option to get the correct thing. Uh, of course if you do unique Bronte dollar Gutenberg ID this is what you're going to get right because for every book uh, it's going to have the Gutenberg ID and the line uh, from the book. So that's the structure of this text. Okay. Uh, so again, we tidy it just by using exactly the same ideas we did before, right? That is, you take the uh, data frame, unnest the tokens. The column is called text, so we unnext it, put it into a new column called word, and we get rid of the stop words. Okay. So all of this is standard, and of course, you can now go ahead and count the word usage patterns of the Bronte sisters. Okay. Now the Bronte sisters and Jane Austen, uh, they wrote at comparable periods in time on comparable kinds of topics. Whereas H.G. Wells wrote uh, you know, in a completely different genre almost you could say. Right? So what we are going to try and do is to compare the word usage patterns of Jane Austen against the Bronte sisters and H.G. Wells. Right? We would expect to see that there is a much greater correlation between uh, Jane Austen and the Bronte sisters and much less of a correlation between Jane Austen and uh, uh, and H.G. Wells. Okay, that's what we would expect to see. Uh, but uh, we can make it quantitative and we can make it a lot more visual by looking at the word counts and also doing some kinds of plots. So that's where we are going now. So now we have two tables, Tidy Bronte and Tidy H.G. Wells. So what we are first going to do is to combine them both into one data frame or one table. Okay. So broadly speaking, we are trying to do take tidy AG wells, tidy Bronte, and create a new data frame called tidy both. And of course, notice that in tidy AG wells and tidy Bronte, the author's name is not an existing column, right? Because that had originally it had Gutenberg ID and text. And we have simply broken up into group Gutenberg ID and word, right? For this example, notice that while we were doing the process of tidying, we didn't really worry about adding line numbers or chapter numbers and so on, because all we are trying to do is to look at the word usage patterns, correlations. So we didn't need the chapter numbers and line numbers and so on. So we didn't go through those steps. Okay. So what we're going to try and do now is to combine them into one data frame or one table, but add this column called Bronte sisters, the column called author. Okay, so that's what we're going to try and do next, the combination. So first, let's combine Bronte and Wells. Okay, so we're going to do uh, mutate tidy Bronte author equals Bronte sisters. In other words, we are taking this data frame or table called tidy Bronte, adding to it a column called author, in which we are going to put Bronte sisters. Right. And we are doing the same thing with AG Wells. We are saying tidy AG Wells, mutate tidy AG Wells, author equals AG Wells. Okay. So this first line is going to create, uh, the first line is going to create this top part, Bronte sisters. The second line is going to create the bottom part, AG Wells. Okay. So the Bronte sisters, that created the top part of the diagram we saw in the previous slide. This created the bottom part of the diagram we saw on the previous slide and we are using the function bind rows to jam those two together. Right? So we, 
we've got one mutate creating this, the other mutate creating this, and bind rows, combining them all into a single table. Okay, so that's what is accomplished right here. If you recall, I had mentioned earlier that what we would like to do is to take the Jane Austen's word usage patterns and look at how it correlates with the word usage patterns of the Bronte sisters and Edgy Wells. Right? In order to do that kind of correlation, we have to somehow convert these word usage patterns into numbers. Right? And one way in which we can do that is to look at the proportion of times each word is used. So what we are going to do is to find the word usage percentages or proportions for Jane Austen. Okay? So uh, of course we already know from our prior experience that sometimes uh, some of the words are prepended and appended with an underscore. So we need to get rid of that. So that's what we are going to do first. right? So we are using string extract just like we did before to do that. So let's take a look at this. So tidy books, right? remember tidy books is our data frame that contains the works of Jane Austen, right, in which we have already converted into words and we have also uh, removed punctuation characters and so on, right. So we are doing Austen percent is tidy books and uh, we are doing the same processing that we did before to get rid of the underscores sitting before and after some of the words. So we are doing that. So word now will not have those uh, ugly underscores and then we are doing a count for a count by word and then we are transmuting words word Austin equals n divided by sum okay uh, that is uh, we are uh, creating a new data frame with only two columns because remember transmute mutate adds a new column transmute keeps only those columns that we mentioned, right? So we are retaining the original column called word and we are creating a new column which is the proportion of times each word has been used. Remember count word produced the word and the count. The count was n, right? So we are saying Austin's word proportion is for every word how many times it was used and uh, divided by the total number of words itself which is the proportion of times each word was used, right? So this will, at the end of it, what this is going to produce is a table with two columns. First column is word, the second column is the proportion of times that word is used. So now we have a table called Austin percent, which has, for every word that Austin used, of course, without the stop words, which we had already got rid of, for every word that Austin uses, we have the word and its proportion use, a proportion of times the word was used. Okay, so now we're going to do a similar thing for Bronte and Wells percentages and then combine Austin as well. Okay, so we're saying frequency is tidy both, mutate, right, we're doing, we doing exactly the same thing as before, right? So tidy both, if you remember, was the table that contained uh, Bronte sisters and A.G. Wells and all the words they used, right? Now that had not yet been cleaned. We are only cleaned for the underscore characters. We are only cleaned uh, uh, Jane Austen's works. So we are doing the same cleaning process for tidy both. And we are doing the count by author and word, right? That is, we are not counting only the words because now this has two authors, right? If you remember, on top we had the Bronte sisters, on the bottom we had Edgy Wells. So we are counting for every word author combination how many times it was used, right? And then we are adding a column called other in which the proportion of times uh, the word was used by that particular author occurs. Okay, so here what we are going to have is for every author word combination, how, what is the proportion of usage? Okay, and then we are joining this with the Austin percent uh, table that we created in the previous slide. Right, of course, the common uh, column for both of them is word.
right? So what we are going to get is for every word, we are going to get its percentage usage by uh, Emily Bron by Bronte sisters, percentage usage by Wells, H.G. Wells, and percentage usage by Austin. Right, we are going to get that. And now, after that, we'll be in a position to plot many of these things. Okay, of course, we are doing ungroup because uh, when we did, uh, we counted by two fields. Okay, it created a grouping. So the result is still going to have, and of course, we didn't. Uh, you know, we counted by two fields, but we did only one summarize, right? Because effectively, when we did this, it did only one summarization. So the result still has a grouping by author left in it, so which we are removing by ungroup. Okay. So now, once we have this, we can start visualizing the word usage patterns. Okay. In order to do this, you have to uh, load a library called Scales. Right. In case you get an error with this, you may have to install package install dot packages scales. You may have to do that, but I think it's included with ggplot. Okay, uh, and then we are doing the plotting here. So we are saying ggplot frequency. Okay, so frequency is our new uh, data frame that we just created here, which contains all the uh, word usage patterns for all the three people, three authors. Right. And uh, why has the uh, Jane Austen is the column name that has Jane Austen's usage proportion, and other is the column that has the usage proportions for uh, uh, Bronte sisters and H.G. Wells, right? So you should take a look at the table that we created called frequency to get an idea of what the structure is, right? And color, we are you know we want to plot each point because there are going to be so many different points. There are thousands and thousands of words, right? So we want to use the absolute value of the difference between Austin and other and put that as the color, okay? So as uh, both of these are proportions, if you remember, right? So as the difference increases, the point is going to be plotted much more darkly, okay? So that we get an idea of the differences and similarities very easily, right? And then we are just doing a, a geom a line, which is just to draw the uh, the middle line, to say that is the line where the two authors being compared have a very similar usage patterns, proportions for a particular word. And as the points go away from the line, then you'll see that the pattern pattern is much more different. And of course, we've already seen in uh, when we learned uh, ggplot that when the points are too close to each other, uh, geom jitter helps to move the points around so that we can dis distinguish them. Alpha makes the uh, plotted points a little transparent and size and width and so on are just uh, about the points themselves. Okay, Then we are saying uh, plot the actual word as the text right? and which is to say basically on the graph plot the points but also indicate for each point which word the point stands for and then check overlap equals true basically says when you're putting many words uh, don't overlap the words and v just just handles vertical justification okay and this just says uh, make the x-axis labels as in logarithmic format as opposed to linear format right because you're going to have uh, many many words uh, so it's better to plot them in logarithmic format for the x-axis. Same thing for the y-axis, right? Right. After all, what we are doing is plotting percentages against percentages or proportions against proportions. And these are very small numbers. So by using a log scale, we are able to enlarge the scale a little bit. Okay. And these are just some color gradients uh, and so on. Okay. And here what we are doing is we are doing a facet wrap because what we want to do is to compare uh, Jane Austen's proportions versus Bronte sisters and H.G. Wells, right? So we're going to have one row and two graphs in it. So that is why uh, pre prepare one chart per author, right? And of course, the proportions are uh, by the individual authors, right? We're going to 
uh, see that. Okay, that is by facet wrap by author. Okay, because remember the author column contains either edgy wells, oh, sorry, uh, Bronte sisters or edgy wells, right? Because one part is fixed, J uh, Jane Austen is fixed, right? So one plot will show Jane Austen versus Bronte sisters, the other plot will show Jane Austen versus edgy wells, okay? And that's that's the author field that comes into. And we are saying don't show any legends because uh, the titles themselves will indicate exactly what's going on. Okay, and this is the labels. Y is Jane Austen, X is null. The reason we put X as null uh, is because the X axis, anyway, the title of that is going to indicate who the author is. Okay, so this is the result that you get. So you've got Jane Austen here, proportion of usages here for Jane Austen. This is the proportion of usage for the other author, Bronte sisters and a G wells. Okay. Now if you look at it, one thing you clearly see is that the points for Jane Austen and Bronte sisters are much closer to the central line than are the points for Jane Austen and A. G. Wells. Okay. Showing that there is much more similarity in word usage between these two than between those two. Okay. So you can also get an idea of uh, you know how some of the words are for example the word miss is high for both Jane Austen and uh, uh, Bronte sisters time dear etc etc right so here interestingly time is used with equal frequency by all the three authors almost equal frequency right it's high for all of them whereas words like miss are high for uh, Bronte sisters and Jane Austen but very low for H.G. Wells Right. So broadly speaking, if you look at this, you can get an idea about how similar or different two sets of authors are. Right. If you want to get more quantitative about it, you can actually run a correlation test as shown here, core.test. Of course, I haven't gone into the details. Right. Of course, you can simply calculate the correlation coefficient between the two authors. Right. But here we are doing a correlation uh, test which gives us a good idea of the range and 95% confidence into it, right? So, for example, you see that uh, between uh, uh, Bronte sisters and Austin, you see that the correlation coefficient is almost 0.76. In fact, it's about 0.76. Whereas, if you look at the correlation coefficient for H.G. Wells and Austin, it's pretty much lower, 0.42, right? So, clearly, that gives us a quantitative confirmation of the hypothesis from here that these two are much more closely related than these two. So in this lecture we have taken a look at the idea of tidy text mining. We have taken a look at how we can take large volumes of text and we saw some sources as well but of course we may have large volumes of text from other sources so we have taken a look at how we can get large volumes of textual data, convert them into tidy form, which is uh, depending on our unit of analysis. And in this lecture, we have used a unit of analysis as word. So we've broken all the text into words, right? And then we looked at how, if required, we can add line numbers and chapter numbers and other related things uh, to our tidy text format, right? So we've looked at all of these things and then looked at how we can use our standard dplyr functions very effectively to process the data. And then we've also gone on to look at how we can combine our knowledge of dplyr and ggplot to make certain interesting plots of textual data. Okay, So that's one kind of uh, text, anal uh, text analytics that is commonly performed to take large volumes of text break them up into individual units and then perform some quantitative and qualitative analyses of these units. Another kind of a, a analysis which is very interesting and very important analysis is what is called sentiment analysis. right? And we'll discuss more about this uh, next week. And sentiment analysis is a very important aspect of uh, text analytics. right? So we look at sentiment analysis. Another interesting 
idea when you are analyzing large quantities of text is also the concept of a word cloud right that is you're given let's say a book and you want to find out which words are most often used in this book okay and of course you want to plot the words that are most often used in big size and least often used in small sizes so that just by looking at a cloud of words you get an idea of what this thing is talking about okay so again that is something where you take a large volume of text and condense it into something uh, small and meaningful which through a quick glance you can get a lot of information out of okay so that is called word clouds so in the next lecture we will extend our skills of uh, tidy text mining to look at uh, sentiment analysis and word counts uh, so that and that will complete our discussion of text analytics